Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. I greet you this morning in that wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who was, who is, and is to come. I greet you this morning with Psalms 119, from verse 1 to verse 8. The law of the Lord. Happy are those whose lives are faultless, who live according to the law of the Lord. Happy are those who follow his commands, who obey him with all their heart. They never do wrong. They walk in the Lord's ways. Lord, you have given us your laws and told us to obey them faithfully. How I hope that I shall be faithful in keeping your instructions. If I pay attention to all your commands, then I will not be put to shame. As I learn your righteous judgments, I will praise you with a pure heart. I will obey your law. Never abandon me. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we come before thee to give thanks and praise unto thee. Lord, thank you for this morning. Thank you for bringing us back to your home. Father God, thank you for your love and your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for being there for us during a tough week. Thank you for your promises that we can stand upon. Father God, thank you for being there for us in troubled times. Thank you for giving us a pure heart. Father, we come before you this morning and we ask of you to forgive us our sins, Lord, if we hurt our neighbors, our loved ones, without even knowing it, Lord, please forgive us. We come before you this morning, Lord, and we ask of thee, please, bless this service. Bless each and every one who's watching today. May your love and your mercies endureth with us from now and forevermore. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, our first scripture reading comes from Ruth, chapter 1, verse 1 to 18. And this is a story about Ruth. Elimelech and his family moved to Moab. Long ago, in the days before Israel had a king, there was a fam famine in the land. So a man named Elimelech, who belonged to the clan of Ephrath and who lived in Bethlehem in Judah, went with his wife Naomi and their two sons, Marlon and Chilion, to live for a while in the country of Moab. While they were living there, Elimelech died, and Naomi was left alone with her two sons, who married Moabite women, Orpah and Ruth. About ten years later, Marlon and Chilion also died, and Naomi was left all alone without her husband and sons. Naomi and Ruth returned to Bethlehem. Some time later, Naomi heard that the Lord had blessed his people by giving them a good harvest. So she got ready to leave Moab with her daughters-in-law. They started out together to go back to Judah, but on the way, she said to them, Go back home and stay with your mothers. May the Lord be as good to you as you have been to me and to those who have died. 
And may the Lord make it possible for each of you to marry again and have a home. So Naomi kissed them goodbye, but they started crying and said to her, No, we will go with you to your people. You must go back, my daughters, Naomi answered. Why do you want to come with me? Do you think I could have sons again for you to marry? Go back home, for I am too old to get married again. Even if I thought there was still hope, and so got married tonight and had sons, would you wait until they had grown up? Would this keep you from marrying someone else? No, my daughters. You know that's impossible. The Lord has turned against us. And I feel very sorry for you. Again they started crying. Then Orpa kissed her mother-in-law goodbye and went back home. But Ruth yelled on to her. So Naomi said to her, Ruth, your sister-in-law has gone home to her people and to her God. Go back home with her. But Ruth answered, Don't ask me to leave you. Let me go with you. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die, and that is where I will be buried. May the Lord's worst punishment come upon me if I let anything but death separate me from you. When Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she said nothing more. This is the word of God. May it be blessed in our hearts. Our second scripture reading is taken from the book of Mark, chapter 12, from verse 28 to 34. The Great Commandment. A teacher of the law was there who heard the discussion. He saw that Jesus had given the Sadducees a good answer, so he came to him with a question. Which commandment is the most important of all? Jesus replied, the most important one is this. Listen, Israel, the Lord our God is the only God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second most important commandment is this, love your neighbor as you love yourself. There is no other commandment more important than these two. The teacher of the law said to Jesus, well done, teacher. It is true, as you say, that only the Lord is God and that there is no other God but he. And to love God with all your heart and with all your mind with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than to offer animals and other sacrifices to God. Jesus noticed how wise his answer was, and so he told him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After this, nobody dared to ask Jesus any more questions. This is the word of God. May it be blessed in all of our hearts. Amen. My theme this morning, my brothers and sisters, is hope in a time of chaos. Today I want to talk to you about Ruth. It's an incredible story of commitment, trials and dedication, testing, deliverance and freedom. It's got it all. Well, apart from a nasty villain, but we can't ask for everything. Yet I believe that the Holy Spirit has placed this book within the Bible for more than historical benefit. He has placed within the characters and storyline key elements and pictures that teach us today about our relationship with the true Redeemer, Jesus Christ. In chapter 1, we see three different women, Naomi, 
Ruth and Opa. We see a backslider, a new convert, and a double-minded woman. I will focus on their lives and what we can learn about them. Point one, the perils of worldliness and sin. Point two, the importance of preaching a real gospel. Point three, the steps of the prodigal in returning to the Lord. And the last one, the cost involving in following the Lord. The book of Ruth starts in the days of Judges and in a time of famine. Now Elimelech and his wife Naomi are living in Israel. And as you know, Israel is the land of milk and honey. God's chosen land. Yet we read that their eyes began looking to the prosperity out there in the world. Ever been there? The picture for us is clear. And it's one that we see often. It's a picture of a Christian who, when times get hard, looks not to God, but to what the world can provide. Not long ago, when we heard for the first time that there's a pandemic, we as Christians were also one of those who panicked. We went to shops. We did shopping for nothing, like it was the end of the world. Now, is that a Christian of hope or with hope? Or is it a Christian that forgot about God? Ever been in that kind of famine? One where God doesn't seem to care or to notice the difficulty you are in and your thoughts turn to the provision and the pleasure offered by the world? No, you will. God allows us into this type of situations to teach us that we live by faith and not by sight. Elimelech and Naomi were in such a situation, faced with running or trusting God. They chose the former and worst of the two options. It was a decision that would ultimately cost Elimelech and his two sons their lives. And as we know, the Bible says, the wages of sin is death. We read that they left Bethlehem, and Bethlehem means place of bread. And in Judah, to go to Moab. And Moab means from father. What father? And in the meaning of Moab, you gain insight into Elimelech's state of mind as he doubts the love and the fatherhood of God. He steps out in willful disobedience to the world, to the word of God, striving forth in his own strength. Not that he has decided to take his family away from the land of Israel permanently. No, this was only going to be a brief stay. He just wanted to, to, to see if there was a better life in Moab. Not a great rebellion against God, but just a little dabble for a season in another land. Nothing wrong with that, is there? Then Naomi's husband died, and she was left with her two sons. The sons took for themselves two Moabite women as wives. They were named Oprah, Orpah, and Ruth. They lived there for about 10 years. Then the two sons also died. Naomi was bereft of her husband and sons. They gained nothing from Moab in the 10 years they spent there. All was for nothing. 
my dear brothers and sisters, those who leave the Lord today find the same thing. Though the world promises fame, fortune and happiness, nothing can come near the peace and hope that the Lord gives us. The prodigal son he had to return to his father after his money was done. But all of us have to learn the hard way. And once the money ran out, he soon found himself lunching with pigs. No, Moab only produces death. And it's no coincidence that we read that Marlon and Chilean also meet their death there. We are, however, introduced to Ruth, and Ruth means friendship, and Orpah, which means stiff-necked. Both these ladies are well-named, as we shall soon see. Naomi wanted to return to her homeland, but her daughters-in-law insisted to go with her. They are coming home, for the Lord had visited his people in giving them food. That's the truth. Though he had seemed far away and his provision was slow in coming through human eyes, yet he had been aware all along of their situation and did provide when the time was right. We need to learn from this. Naomi did, and we see her now, like the prodigal, ready to return home. It may have taken ten years, but she had to return. If you have been a Christian long enough, you have no doubt seen those who have fallen away and gone back to Egypt, the land of milk and honey. Now this is the frame of hope. No matter how out of control your life might be now, we must remember there is always hope. And our hope is in God alone. Even though we chase after idols of power and wealth and self-indulgence, God's promise can be found in the most unlikely places and through the most unlikely people. God is committed to the promise he made to us. When he died on the cross, God said to us, I'm all in. Why do we still cling on to this world? Why can't we trust God 100%? Why are we carrying our burdens all by ourselves? Why? The day when God died on the cross, He made that promise. He said, I paid with my blood to set you free. The only reason why we are suffering today is because of our own choices that we make. When things go wrong, when times get difficult, we chose our own, our, our own ways. We don't trust in God. Whenever we have problems, we forgot about God. Let us cling to God's hope today. Because he is committed to his promise. But are you, are you committed enough to say, God, I'm in all the way? May God bless his word in each and every heart. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank thee for the word. We thank thee for the blessings that came through the word. Thank you for giving us perspective about what you want us to do. Lord, to follow you is, is not an easy path. 
but we thank you this morning that we can know that you are always by our sides. Father, will you bless us further this week? Bless your word in our hearts. Help us to meditate on it. And help us to try and live according to your word and your will. Amen. Now may the grace of God, the fellowship of the Father, and the love of the Son be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen.